my flipped classroom. So um, I actually presented this two years ago, um, and I've I've evaluated my flipped physics classes for a, a couple of semesters. Um, and this is this is the second part of my of that study. So just a kind of quick run through of flipped classroom. So it's basically a pedagogical model where right lectures are watched outside of class. I use Springboard. Um, I use Panopto to make videos. They're posted online, um, and then um, in class we do active learning. So typically in a typical week, right? They might come in and they're supposed to watch the videos, like this week, they were supposed to watch the videos for chapter seven, which was circular motion, right? So we might start, it's a Tuesday, Thursday class. Tuesday, we might start off with doing some clickers. I might do a FET demonstration, ask them to predict what's gonna happen, and then we'll do group work, right? And then, right, the next class, we might do some more clicker questions for the rest of the chapter and do another group work where they work in groups and then they have time at the end of class like depending on how prepared they are they might have as much as a half an hour to work on their their homework that's going to be due at the next class meeting right? <clears throat> and so that's basically what it looks like it this is the same idea as peer instruction um, which was um, eric mazur who i think he's at harvard actually um, and then kind of the idea of the Khan Academy and, and vodcast. So, <clears throat> right, so this is kind of a combination of their ideas. So the idea is that it, the benefits are the instructor gets to interact more with students and learn about student difficulties. That's mostly during the group work stage when students work in groups of two or three and I run around and get my cardiovascular workout by walking around and looking over their shoulder and answering their questions and saying things like, are you sure you want to do that? And it kind of walks them through, so it's pretty guided and it addresses concepts as well as problem solving. Um, the idea is that the pedagogy is better aligned with learning theory, right, that students need to be engaged and thinking, and that the more passive aspects, watching lecture videos, is better done outside the classroom. Right? And right, we have some more flexibility. So some of the problems that I found out right away when I flipped my classes was that some of my students were really resistant to watching the videos, right? And the other problem is that I had to make all of my own videos. So I went up to YouTube and looked at some other things, but they just didn't really necessarily address what I wanted students to learn in my class. And it's very application oriented because my engineering technology students are very pragmatic. So it has to feel like it, it um, is important to them. and their future classes in engineering technology like statics and dynamics and kinematics. There was really limited research on flipped classrooms, mostly their surveys, looking at things in aggregate, so not differentiating how students feel about their flipped classroom experience, like a lot of surveys. Right? <clears throat> so this, the classes that I looked at were again the first and second semester, they're non-calculus based. It's a freshman level physics class, but it's populated with freshmen. Sometimes I have some early college kids, right? I might have in manufacturing, they take currently take physics a little later in their curriculum. So they could be juniors or seniors. Sometimes students have changed majors multiple times and they're just juniors taking freshman level classes. Um, it allowed me to focus on um, problem Solving and conceptual understanding, which were the two most important things in the first two semesters of physics. Um, I use clickers, I use FET, and use group work. Um, part of the reason I did this was actually I used to do my own evaluations, not coll our college's evaluations, at the end of every um, semester. And students often wrote that they wanted to see more examples. They wanted to have time, more time to do group work in class, and they wanted to have time to work on their homework in class, and the only way to do that was to flip flip the classroom. Right? <clears throat> so my first study, and I'm gonna kinda go over this one, right? There were two groups. There was the active learners. These were primarily my better students. Um, learning and grades were both important, right? They really liked interacting with their peers but because of learning, not because of social aspects per se. They saw group work, again, as beneficial to their learning. They're very 
learning centric. Um, they thought instructors' expectations were fine. They had mixed views of watching the flip videos. Some of them watched them, some of them didn't. These were all my AB students. All my AB students were basically there. The second factor were the unprepared traditionalists. And these were my lower students with lower grades in the class. This was at the end of the semester. Um, they said grades were really important to them, but they wish they were doing better because they weren't, right? They were, you know, they were those same ones who come up to you and say, what do I need to do to pass this class? Um, they realized they weren't prepared for exams and the course in general, right? They didn't feel they had to prepare for the clicker questions in class. They didn't like the clicker questions because, you know, they made them feel like they should be prepared for class. It's horrible. Um, and they said that the flip videos were boring and it didn't help them learn and they wanted me to stand in front of the class and talk to them. That's what they wanted. They wanted to be passive learners and sit there, right? But they also felt unprepared. So <clears throat> there's the breakdown of grades and their, uh, and their rank. You notice that there are a number of freshmen and sophomores in there. One senior who got a C. Um, <clears throat> They were pretty neutral about the textbook. They were neutral about the difficulty to find time to watch the flip videos. That wasn't really their, the big problem. Um, everybody thought grades were important, but it seemed to mean different things. I think the lower ones, grades might have meant passing. I mean, it's like when students come to me and they say, you know, you know, I want to get a good grade. I'm like, well, what's a good grade to you? Well, sometimes a good grade is an A, and sometimes a good grade is D, because D is for degree. That's what students have taught me. Um, and they both agreed that working on problems and assignments in class was really enjoyable, right? Factor one, enjoyable more because it was useful for learning, and factor two, more because it was social and they liked talking to their friends in class. When you they stay in the same group and I it's kind of like lab I really toyed with the idea of breaking them into groups or rotating the groups sometimes they change groups on their own sometimes it's because their their newfound friend has dropped my class and sometimes it's just because they don't like working with that person anymore sometimes they ask me if they can change groups I'm like you can work with anybody you want so what's the worst case scenario you could have a bunch of groups or all the fact two who don't want to do it Anything, right? That's right, and, and, and I will tell you right now in the second semester of physics, the two worst students in my class, they are in their own, they are their own group in, when we do group work. So I just have to spend a lot of time with them. Nobody else wants to work with them, because I've tried, but, but that is a problem with assigning groups. I've done some teacher workshops where I've, um, I've had them line up, have you ever done this, where, you know, you're a physics expert, you're a complete physics non-expert, right? Five, one, and you have them line up and then you have them count off. So if you have four groups, you have them count off one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The idea is that they end up with a mixed group. Sometimes that works great and sometimes there's somebody who thought they were a five and they were a one. <laughs> that's not so, that doesn't work so great then. You got one group that's not. Well, I guess the question is kind of like, what would happen if you didn't mix the back to one and two people into the same group? In group. group. Would they, right. Would they improve or would it? Were they not? Yeah. I don't know. That's a great question. Yeah. And, and yeah, I don't know. So then I did my second study. And so one of the things I did, I started making changes in my class, but I also wanted to follow up more with these unprepared traditionalists. Like, what exactly were they looking for? Um, so one of the things I started doing, which I still do, because it seems to work pretty well, the first day of class, I talk about why I flipped the class, right? That I flipped it because of student feedback, right? I also show them every class. The beginning of class, I show them, I remind them that everything's in springboard. The news tells us what the schedule is. It's more accurate than the syllabus, right? How to watch the videos. I remind them of those things all the time because even though the view is that these students are digital natives and they're really techy and savvy, they don't really, they need help using Springboard. I don't know where in the freshman year and if they're supposed to get some kind of orientation on how to use Springboard. I've asked students and I've had a couple of students say that, oh yeah, in like some kind of orientation class, 
you know, somebody throws up, this is springboard and this is how you sign in and this is what it looks like. But they don't really get anything hands-on, so they go in and they sign into Springboard or any anything like that. So, so I've really ramped up my sh exposing them to, and remember, you know, you can come in, this is how you watch the videos, this is what they look like. Um, I also started giving them, the, so they're all PowerPoint slides, but I have a tablet that I plug into my laptop, so I have a problem at the top of the PowerPoint slide, and then I solve it on the slide. And I give them the, the PowerPoints that don't have those solutions in them. So if they want to see the solution to that problem, nothing else, they have to watch the video for that section. And it's Panopto, so they can just look at right, the little screen capture right, is along the bottom and they can just fast forward to the problem solving part if that's what they want to do. I also started giving them a choice. So we play Democratic Society that they can either read the textbook or they can watch the videos. I also have what my students call Ramlo Cliff Notes, which are just they're just a they're just word documents turned into PDFs that are just a summary of chapters and some examples. And so they can use that too. So my whole thing is that you need to do something to be prepared. I also this seems so silly, but I started pointing out that they should take notes while they watch the videos. So when I ask them, do you take notes if you're in a class and the professor lectures? Well, yeah. I'm like, so why wouldn't you take notes when you're watching a video lecture? I don't know, I didn't think about that. So, and it helps them not get distracted. So that's one of the things that I remind them of. Um, and <clears throat> so I revised the Q sample. I got some more feedback from the non-traditional, unprepared traditionalist people. And I, and I did another, and I did another um, Q study. So I changed the statements a little bit. So imposed to reading the textbook was help from, helpful for my learning in this class. I changed it to I preferred reading the textbook rather than watching the lecture videos because now I'm giving them a choice, right? And then I changed, you know, watching video recordings from our face-to-face -face class times was helpful. One of the things I found out was I was making videos of the time in class we did the clicker questions and I had like one student out of 30 who was actually watching those videos. So I actually eliminated that because it was kind of a hog on my poor little university laptop. And so instead I changed that to, um, right, I like to watch video recordings of quiz solutions so I don't work out quizzes in class. Instead I make the solutions on Panopto. I write on my tablet, have the Word document of the quiz on one side and the screen on the other and I make that recording so that students who got the student got 10 out of 10 on their quiz they don't need to hear about what the solution of the quiz was if they got 5 out of 10 they probably should watch that video a couple of times and that's what I usually remind them of so that's how I changed this and there's my basically the same same grid that they sorted on just slightly different statements and um, <clears throat> I actually focused on the second semester um, of physics, tech physics, because a lot of those students were actually in that first study. They were in my first semester class. So this time we had 42 statements again, um, and they sorted at the final exam. And I also asked them some questions, um, like I read the textbook, one to five, right? I watched the lecture videos, just to get a feel for what they were actually doing. <clears throat> Right? And I ended up with two distinguishing, um, uh, two factors, and um, these are some of the distinguishing statements, so how the views are a little different, so I thought I'd present this one a little differently. So um, I liked having flipped class where lectures were online, the first factor was kind of neutral, and the second factor did not like that, right? Simula FET simulations in class and the videos helped me understand. Again, factor one is kind of neutral about that, and factor two really didn't like that aspect. Right? Um, and so, and I'm just hoping to pass this class, right? Factor one says no, right? That's not like their view, and factor two is, right, in at least some agreement with they're just hoping to pass my tech physics class. So basically, it's the same class, right? but they have right, different views of the same opportunities, right? So they all got to experience the same thing as one of the reasons how I got sold on Q was evaluation of teaching instruments, right? The truth is it doesn't 
show that some students love my class and some students hate my class, right? It's the same idea. So this is just a word cloud. To give you an idea of factor one, these are the statements that they felt were most like their views, so they're very focused on learning, right? You notice that's one of the bigger words, right? So that means it was more common in these statements, um, right? The instructor's important, grades, right? Solving homework problems was important, learning new things. So these were still my engaged learners. And then factor two, thank goodness, was the smaller of the group, right? And they have problems with time management, they want to do well in class, right? But they really like the social aspects. They really, it was really important for them to have the PowerPoint slides for, for the notes. That was very important to them. Um, they have time, fi have problems finding time to watch things. And so I changed this a little bit and I called them, instead of the unprepared traditionalists, I called them the naive learners. Right, these are the students who think because they came to class they should automatically pass, basically. Right? They're not really very mature when it comes to being college students. And if this is just kind of a comparison. So one is active, right? Solving, learning, interacting, and the other one is passive, right? Watching PowerPoint slides. They want to see extra examples, they want notes. So this is just a little more detail about the two factors. The engaged learners really enjoyed the class, right? They might not have been totally into the flipped idea, but they loved the group work. That's always the big selling thing. Um, they saw the instructor as a facilitator, right? And that was very positive for them. They were focused on learning. They liked the course design. They liked having choices, or at least feeling like they had choices. They disliked the textbook. Um, group work was very important for their learning. Lear they understand that learning takes time is an important, so they have what we would call a pretty realistic epistemology. Um, and then the naive learners were neutral about the course and the instructor. Again, kind of like the first study, they wished they learned more. They preferred text, the text over the videos. They're just hoping to pass. Um, they thought the videos were boring and they take too much time, even though I tell them that it takes a lot more time to read chapter seven than it does to watch my two 15 minute videos. Um, they're, they're very busy students, or at least they feel like they're very busy. They have time management problems. Um, they might have some traditional leanings, which means that they would rather go to class and be lectured to, and they're very passive. So they might say that they like group work, but they like group work because of the social aspects, kind of like the first studies. So some conclusions, right? The revised Q sample provided some new insight for my students. Um, choices were important. It helped motivate them. More students watched the flip videos than in the first study. And I think it seemed to just be because I gave them a choice. Um, some of the students possess really naive epistemologies. They wanted to learn things quickly, tell us what's on the test, help us pass the test. We just want to pass the course, right? <clears throat> They're, they're really right, having problems with some time management, right? but it's a little broader than this unprepared traditionalist. Um, and uh, it, it very much coincides with, with a, a couple of other studies, which I mentioned here, that looked at um, students in flipped classrooms and students at um, utilizing technology. So <clears throat> changes to the course seem to assist both types of students, right? Um, better understanding of choices for all of us. Print materials were important to factor two students especially. They liked having the ability to print things out and not have to take all the notes because some of the slides are full, right? And the problems aren't. Um, again, promoting, taking notes during the flip lectures benefited some of those students. They said that if I hadn't talked about that, they wouldn't have thought to do it. Um, and, um, and if nothing else, I ended up with more engaged learner types than the naive slash unprepared traditionalists. So, and that's the flipped classroom part. Questions? Questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm curious about for your flipped classroom, your factor two demographic, like were those again like the younger, like more freshmen, Students. I think they were. Uh, I think they were a mixture. I have their class on on that slide. Let's be. 
Oh, it must have been the first one. Yeah, I didn't look at I didn't look at their grades for the second one, but um, <clears throat> yeah. So in fact, they're all they're pretty much a mixture um, of freshman and sophomore on both both factors. So my senior didn't end up on any factor. He was mixed across the two. So. But they were like the A students were all on factor one. So and the the F student was the two F students were on factor two. Yes. Um, as a student staff, what videos are basically because the for students to get an idea about what's going to be taught in the class. Mm -hmm. So um, in that case, I think I my my opinion is my guess actually mm -hmm. is when a student is watching the flip video, they think that. They think that they can go back and watch the video as much as they want. Yes. And mm -hmm. then they know that they're gonna they get an idea about the video and mm -hmm. they know that they're gonna be taught something in the class. So they get, see no reason to write down notes. They Maybe. think that the instructor mm -hmm. is gonna mm -hmm. teach even better, so they're gonna get mm -hmm. better notes in the class. Yeah, except they don't lecture in class. So I mean they might think that at the beginning, but then the only the closest I come to lecturing is showing some FET simulations. I show FET simulations in my in my videos too that are on um, Springboard. But they I think they do sometimes think that they'll look at the clicker questions that we do, which are all they're all concepts, um, and they might think that they'll they'll just take all they need away from the clicker questions. That's very possible. Yes. Was this the same group of students that you surveyed for the uh, online? Yeah, for the online. No, this is a different group of students. Yeah. My students are, they're kind of, they don't change a whole lot. So, not very politically correct, maybe, but pretty much my students are white redneck males between the ages of 18 and 25. They like hunting, fishing, trucks, beer, and women. Not necessarily in that order of preference. I mean, and so, so they're very similar. They're very similar in age. It used to be when I first started here, I had very traditional students during the day and older students at night. And probably about 10 years ago, that started, that started to blend. And I actually have fewer non-traditional students than I used to. So they were, the, the makeup of the students who did the flipped classroom study probably wasn't too different. Grade distribution was probably about the same um, age and ethnicity and all those things were probably pretty much the same too. Well, I guess what I'm getting mm -hmm. at is I'm curious as to whether you think that some of these people would have done better mm -hmm. in a traditional classroom. I think they think they would have. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't know that they. I don't know that they they would have done better. Right. I think that was more their preference. I don't think. I don't feel at least that they are very focused on learning. Right. And so if they didn't, part of the reason I started doing group work was because, right, I would assign homework, and unlike my freshman physics professor, right, I collect all the homework and I grade it, and so. I would have students who get feedback and all kinds of stuff, right? And they would try to do every problem. But then I would have a lot of students who would do no homework. And then the first time they ever tried to solve one of these you know, conservation of energy problems was on the quiz. Well, that probably isn't a good idea, right? So I started doing group work so that mostly these kind of unprepared traditionalists would actually, if nothing else, get practice solving problems before they take the quiz. So, so I don't know if they didn't do group work. I don't. I think that they probably wouldn't be better off. They might feel happier. Yes, ma'am. In group number two, that they preferred text or video, was that the textbook? There was a textbook, yeah. So they were mm -hmm. actually reading the textbook. I don't think so. <laughs> so, so when I asked them like the questions, oops, like these questions. Those students didn't necessarily circle like a four or five for, right? I read the textbook, not just the problems assigned. So, so yeah, so they preferred it, but I think it was more a case of they liked the idea of the textbook more than watching the videos, but I don't know that they actually opened it more than to, to find the right equation for the homework problems. 
Yes, Robert. Um, your presentation makes me feel a whole lot better, actually. Oh, okay, um, good. <laughs> um, this last year we've been running these modeling workshops for in-service science teachers to, right. to, to teach modeling every mm -hmm. year in the summer. And there's about 25 in there, and they split right down the middle into these two groups here. Really? And these are in-service teachers. So it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily reflect the age or the experience of the, the students. It's mm -hmm. just the background and the attitude that they bring with them. Oh yeah. Um, but one of the things about the videos I noticed was that like we show videos, we do fetch, we do these other simulations. Mm -hmm. One of them told me, this is kind of astonishing, when they were watching a video, they thought it was just like when they go to the movies, they're watching a movie. It oh. wasn't that fast, it was just a, like a video. It's just entertaining. So they don't take notes when they watch videos, mm -hmm. it's just they watch it, right? They didn't right. think of it. It's notes. like watching something on YouTube. Exactly. Right. So that, that, that was mm -hmm. their explanation for why they wouldn't take it. I said, the, the same question, you don't take any notes, I'm just going to watch the video. Right. Oh, that's really funny. I hadn't it's thought about the movie thing. The sense that it's always there. If I yeah. want, I can always go back mm -hmm. and see it. Yeah. Right. But that never happens, actually. So right. See the first time mm -hmm. see. Well, it's funny because um, I've explained to students. I'm like, I can go into Springboard and Panopta. I can see how much time you spend on Spring. We can see everything that you guys do. <laughs> um, how much time you spend on Springboard. And it's... Like if I went and looked at those non they're they're the students who they don't go up on Springboard. I had students hand in the wrong homework this semester, a couple of weeks ago, my first semester class. We're a little behind. We had to spend some extra. They are not a good class, but we love them. Um, so they they just needed some more time on some basic things. So we're a little behind where the syllabus would have us. And and I said, well, why would you hand in? Like, didn't you go up on Springboard? You go up on Springboard. There's the news. Week 11, week 12, this is what we're doing each day. What is the way to get the, the, that group of disengaged, mm -hmm. just give it to me group, to get them to transition to the other group, some, the other group somehow? What, what kind of things could you suggest? Or well, one of the things I've been doing is, so this is, it's funny you should ask that. So one of the questions, so this kid is taking my class for the second time. He, he failed last semester. And, um, and with all three of them, they still took me again. So that, I guess that's a good sign, right? And um, the, one of the kids who handed in the wrong homework, I said, well, I mean, I start every class with, look, it's springboard, it's week 11 and 12, look, this is what we're gonna do, this is on springboard. And, and I said, well, you know, the schedule's on springboard and there's a disclaimer in the syllabus that says, schedule is subject to change, see springboard. And um, he's like, oh, I don't, I, don't, I don't do springboard. Like, you don't do springboard? He goes, no. Like you never go up there. No, not really. So I, I don't know. There's, uh, okay, there's yeah. one thing that helps on that's online quizzes, right? Yeah. Because the, uh, so by now most of the students on campus mm -hmm. have, have done online stuff, right? Mm -hmm. When they first did online quizzes, the, the problem was getting them to go online and, and, uh, and do them. remember them, mm -hmm. right? So the remembering is not that much of a problem anymore because they have other things that happen mm -hmm. online. But I have, otherwise I have, the, I have similar things I've got in a week. So I post solutions to the homework, right? And mm -hmm. I prepare for the students every week. And in uh, week 10, I get a request, right? Could I please post homework solutions? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I notice the mm -hmm. homework, right, label and the content tab. Mm -hmm. And I have a, on my welcome page, mm -hmm. I have a statement where they sh can find the slides and the mm -hmm. work and the solutions and so on. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I have a colleague who teaches, also teaches the first semester of physics and um, she makes them for their homework, there's an online component to get them to come up on Springboard. And one of her students, she wasn't, she wasn't in, it wasn't her office hours and uh, he came to see me and he's asking me some questions and I said, well, have you watched, have you watched Lori's videos up on Springboard? And he looked at me, he said, she has videos? Like, yeah, she has videos. And I know they're also in the content area, same as mine, you know, broken down by each chapter sometimes. They just, yeah, they just don't. And I don't know, I should ask her if she goes up and shows them the videos. So, but it's a problem. I don't know. I don't know how to get students like Ryan, who says I just don't do Springboard. I'm like, well, then that's why you didn't get. That's why you didn't get the second problem on Quiz Six, right? Because it was the same problem as 
quiz five, except instead of just finding the work done, you had to find the power, but it was the same exact problem. And then I could tell every student who watched the solution to that, that quiz because they solved it just like I had in the video. But I don't know how you get students like Ryan to go up and follow through with that. Yes? Well, I'm not going to plan on forcing people to, for example, in these videos to watch the videos. But mm -hmm. the thing is, if it's necessary for them, the instructor feels that it's necessary. So mm -hmm. now uh, we mm -hmm. have pre lab, pre class quizzes that mm -hmm. they have grades. And right. the aim is the same to make us get a concept, get mm -hmm. ready for the class. So if these videos have a grade or something, mm -hmm. And and we tried that. Um, it wasn't me. It was somebody else teaching. I think it was in our chemistry 111 class. And so she gave points. So there was like 10% of your overall grade was if you watch the videos. The problem is that they can watch the videos going through Panopto and they can watch the videos going through Springboard and you can't differentiate and sometimes students said they watch the videos and they could say enough about the video that it did seem to, but it wasn't tracked well and so there's a whole technological issue with, with doing that. Um, I like the idea of making it so they watch the video. So this actually came up in book club. Um, so my overall so especially for the first semester of physics, part of my goal is not just to teach them physics, but to help them become more mature learners. So, right, so we do clickers, right, and then we do group work. Right? If you're prepared for the group work, right, you'll get done and have time left over to work on homework problems. And eventually, the ones who aren't very prepared figure out that other people are asking me homework questions, not group work questions. Well, how do they do that? Like, I don't know. Hey, Lakota, how, do, how are you prepared to work on homework? She's like, I watch the videos. So sometimes sometime that works. A little, a little bit of peer pressure, a little bit of figuring out that if I get done early, I could work on my homework. But then sometimes I get students who, they're done early and they just get up and leave. I'm like, don't you want to work on your homework? No, I'll do that later. And then they're the students who hand in two homework problems or zero homework problems. So, I, and I'm not sure how to get them over that hurdle. They seem to have very different views of what learning and knowledge are. I, one of my early studies was a whole series looking at student epistemology. And in a lot of ways, it was really similar to this. There were students who were more mature. They knew learning was going to take a long time. They were willing to keep trying to understand a topic. And then there was kind of this, then there was the other group, which was like, I should just be able to look at it. And if I don't understand it, I give up. Really? Well, that doesn't seem like a very mature way of approaching college, but sometimes it's because that was their experience, maybe in high school or somewhere else. So I think I think a lot of those things are long term, long term fixes. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't we stop here? Go upstairs. There should be okay. coffee and cookies upstairs. At two fifty, you are all in.